New Vegas is the best Fallout to release since Fallout 2. It does almost everything better than any other Fallout that came after or before for that matter. Better weapons, NPCs, quests, writing, DLC, and it's a much better wasteland in general, but above all, it gets what makes Fallout, Fallout. However, I can't make the same argument regarding gunplay and animations. It's not the game's fault. After all, it uses the Gamebrew engine, while more modern Fallout games like 4 run on the Creation engine. Therefore, New Vegas leaves a lot to be desired when it comes to gunplay, combat, animations, and features from modern Fallout games. Fortunately, mod authors like Zelandro exist. In this episode, we'll be taking a look at his mod profile, which consists of over 20 mods, and many of them bring modern FPS features to Fallout New Vegas. All of them combined should enhance the gunplay and combat overall. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Modders Got Talent, and without further ado, let's start the show. Have you ever felt like your weapon's position on the screen was too obscuring? Or that the way you're holding it doesn't represent your personality well? Either way, Hip Control is the mod to fix your problem. It allows you to easily readjust your weapon's idle position in first person, on screen, in game. This mod is quite versatile. You can get a centered view of your double barrel shotgun like in Doom, hold your machine pistol out to the side like a gangster. Give me your money, bitch! Oh, calm down, bro. You calm down. Just hurry up! Or even, with the right animations, handle your weapons in a more tactical way to emulate Call of Duty. Heck, maybe you're role-playing as a super mutant and want to hold a minigun over your shoulder. The possibilities are endless. The process is streamlined and made very simple. Click the right shift and control keys to start repositioning your gun. Controls will show up on the screen, use your mouse to readjust your weapon's view, when you're finally done, press enter to save your changes and the aim button to exit the menu. I'm not familiar with many first-person shooters, but I've never seen this feature in any game before or even as a mod for any other video game. Zelandro has truly created something unique or perhaps one of a kind with this one. I've always hated how aiming down the scope worked in New Vegas. The screen would fade into the scope texture overlay that would black out all your surroundings and your FOV would just decrease to emulate a zooming effect. Essentially, you're not even using the scope that's on your gun. Fortunately, Zelandro has blessed us with B42 optics. This mod brings dual render scopes to Fallout New Vegas. All the scopes on the guns that have them now come with variable zoom. Night vision can be toggled on or off for scopes that support it. Your view will switch to first person automatically when you aim with a scoped weapon in third person. And support for any weapon mods can be easily added. Double rendered scopes is a feature of modern FPS games like Modern Warfare 2. And it certainly takes us a step closer towards enhancing Fallout's gunplay. New Vegas has the big biggest arsenal of any Fallout game, and with B42 Inspect, you can properly appreciate how sexy they are by inspecting them. The mod adds two animations that can be triggered by pressing assigned hotkeys, one for checking your weapon's condition, and another for checking how much ammo you got in the magazine. There are 35 unique animations included with the mod, but it also acts as a framework for animators as well, giving them the ability to add custom inspect animations to their weapon mods. At first glance, you'd think this is just a useless feature for modern FPS games, but it actually comes in handy when you like to play without the HUD for maximum immersion. And I imagine Gunnuts would love to have this mod in their game regardless. In the vanilla game, there are no animations for consuming items or performing certain actions like looting a corpse. It can be quite unimmersive. There are mods that try to add this layer of realism to the game, but they come up short because of engine limitations. However, Zillandro is a man only limited by his mind, and his mind has no limits. That's why he's made B42 Inject Framework, which allows modders to insert unique animations for each item you interact with in the game. The mod itself only adds stim pack animations. If you want animations for more items, grab Hitman's B42 Inject Animation Pack. It adds about 40 animations to over 20 consumables in the game. Jet. Whiskey. Steady. Buff out. Even the doctor's bag and many more aid items. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Hitman is working on introducing more animations for item usage or even just picking up certain collectibles and quest items. But from what I can tell, he's planning on creating animations for simply looting in general by the looks of these skinning animations. Mods like this add a hardcore element to the game because now you don't just magically consume items at the press of a button, 
but you actually see your character use them and you'll have to wait for the animations to finish. So it wouldn't be wise to use a doctor's bag in the middle of combat. And at the very least, the animations would just add a little bit of eye candy or flavor to the game. Modding your guns with attachments in the vanilla game was handled poorly. Once you've decided to add a scope or suppressor onto your gun, you won't be able to remove those attachments ever. But with the real-time weapon modding system, you'll be able to attach and remove your mods freely in real time. This is great because you won't have to be taken out of the action during combat. You can adapt your gun to the combat situation accordingly in real time. A neat little feature in Fallout 4 is the ability to smack enemies with your gun. New Vegas being the older game didn't have this mechanic, but thanks to Zillinjo with B42 Melee Bash, this feature has been added to the game. And the way it's been implemented is better than how Bethesda did it. You see, you can't just endlessly bash everyone and everything at no cost. Your weapon's condition will decrease quite a lot with every hit, and bashing will also consume action points. You can perform this new attack by using any non-melee weapons, even missile launchers. And the heavier the gun, the more damage you'll do. Bashing will also rely on your melee weapon skill. Zillinjo has accounted for vanilla perks also affecting bashing, all the while adding new perks to the game that'll make your butt stroke more useful. Like knocking out enemies with a sneak attack, or breaking open locked doors. All in all, the madman has injected this new form of attack into New Vegas seamlessly. He's done a much better job implementing this feature in FNV than Bethesda has in Fallout 4. B42 Weapon Inertia is another mod that'll enhance your gunplay experience. In modern FPS games, there's an amount of delay and resistance on the gun when the camera moves, and this mod adds this feature to New Vegas. It's a simple change, yet very effective in smoothing out the gunplay in the game. In Fallout, sometimes you'll be pinned down behind cover during a firefight, and you can't risk popping out to land a few shots. It's in cases like these, the mod B42 True Leaning comes in handy. It adds the ability to peek around corners by leaning. You can perform this new movement by pressing the hotkeys you assigned in the configuration file. They'll be E and Q by default. And if you're using a controller, simply aim near a corner and you'll lean automatically. This mechanic could also be used to check for danger around corners before you make a push. I don't know about you, but aiming in New Vegas is hard, especially with a controller. With softlock aim assist, you'll get some hand holding when you aim down sights. What this mod does is help you lock onto your target when you aim, if your target is close enough to the center of the screen. This will come in handy when battling enemies with jerky movements like the Cazadors. Fallout's third-person animations have always had issues, but games prior to Fallout 4 had it the worst, because there were no diagonal walking and running animations. It looks very floaty. Diagonal movement takes care of the problem by simply adding diagonal animations. You can also combine this mod with 360 movement to bring New Vegas' animations even closer to Fallout 4's. One of the coolest perks in Fallout 4 was Intimidation. This perk would allow you to pacify NPCs by aiming your weapon at them to force their surrender. Don't move. Zillinjo has made a mod for Fallout New Vegas that adds this perk to the game. The perk comes with pretty high requirements, as it should, and it has a trio of ranks, each one allowing you to further manipulate NPCs. And all the perks pretty much work exactly how they did in Fallout 4. New Vegas was the first Fallout to introduce iron sights to the franchise. However, one of the major problems with the game also stems from them. Most of the weapon's iron sights were misaligned and that made your accuracy very inconsistent during combat. Modders for years have attempted to fix this issue by fixing the weapon's meshes and animations. Zillinjo decided to hell with all of that and made the IS Control Enabler, a system to easily adjust the iron sights node to the center of the screen. Aim down sights and press the right shift on your keyboard, then simply Simply move your mouse to adjust the iron sights node, then save your adjustments by pressing enter. Over the years, many have attempted the implementation of bows and arrows in Fallout games, but nothing has been able to do it better than B42 bows. This mod adds two distinct bows and 19 different arrow types to the game with proper animations and leveled list integration. The bows and animations are heavily inspired by Far Cry, but aside from that, the real celebrity of the mod is the variety of ways you can take out opposing combatants thanks to the diversity of arrow types. You can now use poison gas arrows to suffocate NPCs, explosive arrows to blow them to smithereens, and incendiary arrows to burn them alive. This next one is Zillinjo's latest release. B42 Loot is a mod that adds looting animations in first person where you physically grab the item you're looting. Finally, I can be fully immersed when I kill a man for his gun and take it from his cold dead hands. And with B42 Drop Mag, you'll drop partially spent magazines on the ground and you can also use B42 Loot to pick them up. 
Ah, I love mods. And now it's time for the Q&A section where Zill and Joe is gonna answer your questions. As a creative, how do you organize your ideas and decide what to tackle first? Do you pick one project and see it through to the end, or do you jump back and forth between multiple projects at a time to keep yourself interested and to avoid burnout? As far as organization goes, I have a list called Dirtbox, where I keep all the ideas I've ever had for mods since 2013 or something. Lots and lots of ideas. A lot of them are completely unrealistic or requiring a team of very dedicated people to create. That'll obviously never happen. <laughs> As for how I decide which one I want to work on, that very much depends. I really love to work on things that feel good. More often than not, it's something about motion, animations, the overall visual side of the game, but not graphics. It's always most interesting to me than other ideas. I also try to pick something Hitman would like to play with too, not just me, although we usually work on such mods together. I also happily jump into old but loved ideas that were not exactly possible in the past, but thanks to our NVSE boys, they are now. For example, Inject was Hitman's pitch from like 2015 or something. We had very specific vision of what that mod was supposed to be but were limited by lack of required functionality at the time. Only years later I was able to put together code that did what we wanted thanks to our true legends of New Vegas modding, Jazz's Paris, Karkst, Demo Roam, and Cormaker, who added required funks for us. Which leads me to the next big point in choosing what to work on, available functionality. If there's a mod I can tackle without the need to go around and beg C++ programmers to make new functions, I stick to it. It's pretty rare though. Nearly all my mods require some back-end support, usually from Jazz, so I just go with the one that requires as little of it as possible. And last part of the question, seeing one to the end or jumping between multiple projects and how do I avoid burnouts? I'm trying to tackle one at a time, especially lately, but if the project feature is way too complex and requires more than a few months of work, I just take breaks from it and work on something else until I feel like I can go back to that complex one. Burnout in the past was my constant companion, unfortunately. Now it's a bit better. I'm also greatly limited by using a very old laptop, so I can't jump into something crazy like jets or helicopters or horses. Smaller mods are my bread and butter at the moment. This is going to sound very generic, but I learned by reading Gek Wiki. Just opened my first script tutorial, it was something about items and containers, and followed it. Wiki has a lot of code examples, so I read those, tried to write something myself, slowly figuring out the syntax. And of course I had my eyes glued to the list available functions to play with, and all I did for many months was reading through them, seeing some interesting ones, and go like, oh wow, by using this funk I can do what now? So it was a mix of curiosity and excitement. Once I figured out the syntax, and it took me a while, I'm not very smart, the rest was just putting pieces together and ta-da, it suddenly turns into a working, or not really at first mod. I was never into maths or programming or whatever logic related, but the simple idea of being able to change how the game looks or works was so exciting. It kept me going, it still does, it's a lot of fun. And I learned something new all the time. Some months ago I've moved to ESP list, script runner way of making mods, and it kinda helped a lot with motivation. Because it's full of limitations and quirks. Finding ways to dodge them all is weirdly satisfying. How did I get so good? I didn't. Trust me, I'm not that good, just very, very stubborn. I pretty much keep bashing my head against the wall until the mod works, or until I get so very frustrated. It burns me out on the idea entirely, and I never touch it again. That's just the thing. You see me showing or releasing only those mods that I managed somehow, because I'm still surprised about a few, to get working. But what you don't see are those mods that I failed spectacularly. And there's dozens of those, woof. So the only thing I've truly learned is which walls are stronger than my head, and it kinda helps. <laughs> uh, either way, anyone can script. It's only a question of time and effort you are ready to invest into it. And with each success or failure, you're gonna get better and better. What are some of your planned Project B42 mods? War turned our lives upside down, and chances that I'll die from Russian missile strike are high enough to not have any plans for more than a few days ahead, so I just go with the flow, work on mods when I have some free time, and that's pretty much it. 
Right now I'm working on Interact, it's a mod that adds animations to quest items and so on, and hopefully we'll be able to release it pretty soon. What comes after? I have no idea. Plenty of things to work on, but I'll probably pick something I can make in less than a month. Support Ukraine, fellas, and donate to Save Life Charity Foundation. The sooner we're done with invaders, the better. What frustrates you most about the game's engine? How do you manage to get around the hurdles and make these, quite frankly, magical mods? Oh, and where do you get your ideas from? And what inspires you to keep making mods? Judging by what mods I make, you can clearly tell I'm a huge stalker, metro, and far cry enjoyer. Most of the things I work on is directly or indirectly inspired by those games and features they have. I'm not original. I'm not even trying to be, and surely won't be the one to reinvent a wheel, and at the end of the day there's nothing new under the sun. Great ideas spread across the gaming industry like a wildfire. One genius dev comes up with a cool idea, and a few years later that idea with some modifications, alterations, or twists appears in other games. As for me personally, I just see some really well designed features we lack and I just want to have it here too. Envy and Beth style RPGs overall, thanks to their open-ended game design, allows for a lot of different features to coexist. So I feel no shame for copycatting those great games. <laughs> I also get tons of inspiration from a wide variety of books like horror, sci-fi, and even a bit of Warhammer 40k. But anything inspired by books, and this time with no copycatting, is one of those, ugh, oh, this is gonna need a whole team of people ideas, that'll never happen. Engine hurdles and how much they frustrate me. Uh, not much, really. Engine, contrary to popular belief, is actually amazing. It's Gamebryo with Havoc for Physics. It's super flexible and advanced. What does have problems is the game. The game itself has a lot of hurdles and limitations. It's all those systems that were added either by Bethesda or Obsidian. It's also important to note that modding and bugs aside, those hurdles and limitations don't matter at all. Nonetheless, how I manage... After a decade of modding, I just learned to stay away from ideas that are at risk of encountering such limitations. For example, I avoid working on mods that require scripted AI shenanigans or AI packages. There's absolutely nothing wrong with the system itself or how original developers use it. It's perfect, it does exactly what it's supposed to, and it's tuned according to the design of the game. But problems start only when somebody tries to interfere with it by doing something stupid like overloading an NPC with packages, or changing them too fast, or forcing NPCs into some combat changes while they have active packages that directly conflict with whatever you're forcing them to do. So you just get an NPC that stares into the void for 10 seconds instead of doing whatever you wanted them to do, or whatever they were supposed to do. Of course, there are ways to work around those hurdles, but they are hacky at best and without very extensive testing. You never know if your workaround is sound or it's gonna fall apart on a different system or with some specific set of mods or different time of in-game day or combat group versus solo actor, etc. The biggest limitation we had that was frustrating as hell, animation system. We couldn't do much with it at all. Each animod was a replacer, each unique reload or special action were done via very hacky ways. It was truly a nightmare. Release of KNVSE animation plugin was a miracle. Cormacur single-handedly solved all our animation problems. It's important to say that a lot of limitations of the game over the years have been alleviated by our tireless programmers. Stewie alone made so many tweaks that expanded modding possibilities. I'll go on for another hour just by naming each. It's amazing. We have some of the strongest and smartest coders around, and I'm very lucky they listen to our constant give me this, give me that, fix this, fix that scriptoid shit. So next time you see good old Zalandro releasing a mod, 99% chance Jazz or Demo or Karkst or Stewie got extra white hair and had to spend several nights reverse engineering some spaghetti just to make Zalandro stop asking and whining. Mad lads, huge respect and massive thanks to them. Alright Zillinjo, I got 25 rapid fire questions for you, I'm gonna need you to answer them as briefly as possible. How do you manage to achieve such mad lad energy to create the mods that you do? Autism. Do you like steak? Yes. If so, do you prefer it rare or well done? Yes. Do you like it cooked on the barbecue or in the oven? Yes. Do you like it marinated? Yes. What country do you think the next Fallout game should take place? I have absolutely no idea. How does it feel to be such an awesome dude? It doesn't. Have you ever thought of making a horror mod for Fallout New Vegas? I sure did. Are you gonna mod Starfield when it comes out? I'd love to. How does it feel to have magical skills? Inquisitor, 
I swear I have no such things. What god did you pray to to make the cars work in the Gamebrew engine? Inquisitor, is this a trick question? There's only one god, and he's on Terra. What's that creature you use as your profile picture? Supposedly a cat. I have no idea. Does the Mojave make you wish for a nuclear winner? No, but I was an adventurer like you. Can we count on your support for the Cascadian independence movement? Inquisitor, please. Are you ever gonna work in another big mod project again? Say like Nuevo Mexico or something similar? Only if I keep that project in absolute and total control. Did you know that you've dramatically improved this man's life with your mods? Now I know, and happy to hear that. Will you ever quit almost killing yourself over making a mod you can save for the next day? I'm trying my best to mod easy these days. How hard is it to create mods? Just like any other thing. It's hard in the beginning, but gets easier as you learn. What are you most grateful for? The Emperor protects. What's your favorite Fallout NPC? The Nick Valentine. Which one of your mods took you the longest to finish creating? From start to finish in one go, day-to-day -day hard work? Gotta be cars. Do you have any pets? We have three cats. Can you juggle? No, but I can clown around regardless. Grilled cheese? Sometimes. Hot dogs or hamburgers? Both. Why are you always mean to other modders and people? I'm not. Do fish get thirsty? Inquisitor, I swear fish don't talk to me. By the throne, stop with the tricky questions. I'm not a heretic. And our final question, standalone vehicles. When? Walk. YouTube. YouTube never changes. Smash like and subscribe.